South Africa is a country at the southern tip of Africa with a wide diversity of cultures, languages, landscapes, animals, and plants. In fact, it has one of the world's biodiversity hotspots, areas where the concentration of species is orders of magnitude higher than in other regions of the world. Most people who come to South Africa will spend time visiting some of the major cities, such as beautiful Cape Town. A visit to the tourist areas will yield a wide array of entertainment from locals, a taste of local culture, and opportunities to see some of the world-famous destinations, such as Table Mountain or Kirstenbosch Botanical Garden. However, more adventurous types will venture out into the bush to go on safari to see big game animals, or perhaps some of the cute ones. Birders flock to South Africa for a chance to see some of the 900 or so species of birds that reside there. There is also a tourism industry dedicated to the wildflower season, and that's because the Cape Floral Kingdom has only 1% of the world's land area, but 10% of all species, many of which are found only in this region. So why is South Africa a biodiversity hotspot? There are many reasons that this part of the world contains so many species of plants and animals. One reason is the broad diversity of habitats available to organisms. If you look at a topographic map of southern Africa, you'll notice there is a bent line of mountains that follow the contour of the south and west coast. These are the Cape Fold Belt Mountains, which get their name because the bedrock is folded into accordion pleats. This happened over millions of years as the southern continents were pushed together or pulled apart. Two major biomes were separated by the Cape Fold Mountains. One is the coastal fynbos, which is characterized by fine-leafed bush, giving the name fine bush. And the other is the Karoo, and there's a succulent Karoo and a great Karoo. If you travel across the Karoo to the northeastern part of the country, you enter a grassland biome that is topped off by some of the largest mountains in southern Africa. These are the Drakensberg and the highlands of Lesotho. Grasslands and savanna and some forest belts make up the other types of biomes. So much variety in the landscape combined with climatic differences from south to north and west to east goes a long way to explaining why South Africa is a biodiversity hotspot. One of the more interesting but little known species of plants in South Africa is a parasitic plant by the name of Hyobanki. The common name is cat's nails and that's because of the way the style curves out of the flower tube to resemble a cat's claw. Hyobanki is a small genus and it takes all of its nutrients and water from the roots of other plants. It is totally unable to make its own food. It's also found in ecosystems that have been mostly preserved from human interference. So wherever you see plants of Hyobanki, there's a good chance that the ecosystem is in relatively good shape. I like to compare this to the canary in a coal mine scenario. Presence of Hyobanki in an ecosystem means that it's in relatively good shape. But when it disappears, there is a huge problem. Similar to many plant groups in South Africa, there isn't a lot known about the basic biology of Hyobanki. My lab group has been working on figuring out the relationships among species, ecosystem requirements, and the distribution of each of the species. We're particularly keen to figure out the host range and whether Hyobanki is important for maintaining diversity of plants in an ecosystem. Our work in South Africa involves travel to each of the biomes where the plant occurs, long-term monitoring of the ecosystems where we found it, and excavation of the underground rhizomes to collect host root tissues. Hyobanki is pretty cool in that it has no roots of its own, but taps into the roots of other plants via attachment of leaf bracts along the rhizome to host roots. We collect tissue samples to bring back to the lab to do the DNA work, that will identify the host plants and tissues from Hyobanki to help us in our genetic analyses. Your contributions can help with our efforts. We need to be in the field to find populations of Hyobanki, to gather tissue samples for our genetic studies, to make observations about the biology of the plant, and to collect host root samples to identify the plants parasitized by Hyobanki. Your donations will be used to fund travel for field work and to purchase laboratory supplies essential to our molecular studies. Thanks for your help. Please check our News from the Wolf Lab blog for status updates and stories about our work in South Africa.